Hello, and greetings to all you fans of Dungeons & Dragons. In this video, I will be reviewing and discussing the Dungeons & Dragons module A0 Danger at Dark Shelf Quarry, which was written by Skip Williams and published by Wizards of the Coast in 2015. Danger at Dark Shelf Quarry was part of a compilation titled Against the Slave Lords. This module was meant for player characters between the levels of 1 to 3. It is light on story and heavy on dungeon, basically a dungeon crawl. Dungeon Masters are expected to expand upon the contents within the module and make it their own. Also, the module was written for AD&D 1st edition rules. I would also include 2nd edition rules as well. However, the monsters and enemies are not too complex in nature. Hence, I do not think it will be too much trouble for the Dungeon Master to convert it to 5th edition rules. This module was meant to be a prequel to the Slave Lord series, also known as the A series modules. It is funny that this module was released more than 30 years after the A series, which were published in the early, early 80s. Each of these modules were originally tournament modules played at Gen Con game fairs, before being expanded and then published. At a future date, I plan on reviewing and discussing each of the modules in the A series. In 2013, Wizards of the Coast planned on re-releasing the A series into one compilation. Chris Perkins, a former employee of the Wizards of the Coast, famed game designer and dungeon master, contacted Skip Williams to create a prequel adventure. As a side note, before being acquired by Wizards of the Coast, TSR had compiled the A-series into a compilation titled Scourge of the Slave Lords in 1986. The module takes place on the fantasy world of Greyhawk, in the environs of Dark Shelf Village. According to the module, the Dark Shelf Village lies just east of the Palera River in the country of Nirond. The river flows into the Sea of Girnot. However, I could not find any map of Greyhawk that shows where the Palera River is located. Hence, the Palera River must be a minor river. If the DM is using Greyhawk as their campaign setting, then they can have the adventure take place practically anywhere along the Neyrond coast off the Sea of Girnot. Dark Shelf is a small village so named for the dark stony seabed in its harbor. Despite the name of the module, no map or details of Dark Shelf Village is provided in it. This is unfortunate because for drama purposes, the DM could have the player characters run into the villains within the village, such as at a tavern or at a shop, etc. For thorough DMs, as a quick and dirty solution, I would make a mirror image of the village of Rustenford in the L1 module as a starting point. Towards the left of the map, you should see the city of Highport. It is here and in its environs where the A series modules take place. A limestone and granite quarry lies three miles inland from the village. As background, not all is well at the quarry. As the workers tunneled more deeply, they broke into underground springs that flooded parts of the quarry. Many workers have reported eerie sounds, including moans, cries, rattling chains, sobs, and rhythmic chanting coming from somewhere within the disused tunnels. In addition, several half-eaten bodies of 
both human and animal origins have been found near Dark Shelf, both on the waterfront as well as inland. On top of all that, pirates and slavers have been active in the region. Nestor is the human overlord of Dark Shelf Village. He is a stocky, middle-aged man with graying hair and beard. He has become suspicious of the dwarf he knows as Basili, who operates the quarry. As a plot hook, Nestor hires the player characters to investigate the quarry. I will now be discussing the module itself and this video will contain spoilers. Unless you are the dungeon master who will be running this module for their players, or are a player who already played through this module and are watching this video for nostalgia purposes, I would suggest not to watch the rest of this video. As stated earlier, no map is provided for Dark Shelf Village, nor any details of its inhabitants. So the DM needs to fill in a lot of blanks when the player characters start their investigation from Dark Shelf. Four non-player characters or NPCs are named and given some detail in the module. There are five more non-friendly NPCs, but are not described in any detail. The rest are nondescript. I have already mentioned Nestor, and I will now discuss the other three important NPCs. Basili Arak, whose real name is Burbgrok, is a third-level half-orc fighter. This half-orc fighter with flame-colored hair and beard, is posing as a dwarf and is the villain of the adventure. He received the title to the quarry and its environs from the local overlord, Nestor, in return for a share of the revenues. For two shifts, the quarry employs the local population. For the late-night shift, Burbgrok claims he employs his dwarven clan. However, Burbgrok is actually a slaver who is supplying slaves to the despoiled city of Highport. In order to divert attention away, he staged a raid on a slaver camp. The camp was, on purpose, comprised of grunts who were not in good standing with the slavers. Oh, uh, this is going to be fun to pronounce. Gil... <laughs> Gil... Uh, Lear... Gilthiel? Gilthiel? Okay. Glyrthiel is Burbgrok's chief assistant and is second in command of the slaver operations in the Dark Shelf region. She is a second level fighter and magic user elf. Quan is a male human second level monk. Quan was initially sent by Nestor to investigate the quarry. He has made quite a bit of progress and can be found posing as a captive slave in the lower level of the quarry. However, if the player characters find themselves in a bad situation anywhere within the quarry, the dungeon master can use Quan to come to their rescue. As an example, the player characters foolishly assaulted the guardhouse and were defeated. In this scenario, the slavers will take them captive and throw them into the holding area located in the quarry's lower level. It is there they will meet and be freed by Quan. The module only provides maps for the guardhouse that overlooks the quarry and for the quarry itself. 
The module contains boxed text for most all the numbered areas that the DM can read out loud to the players as they progress through the adventure. The guardhouse and the quarry together have 66 numbered areas. The guardhouse has 11 human guards, 16 goblins, 3 bugbears, and more than 20 slaves and a few other creatures. Given the ruckus nature of goblinoid creatures, and assuming the player characters were able to enter without raising an alarm, the dozens of the guardhouse will not respond to the noise of fighting in most areas of the guardhouse, in general. There is no direct entry to the quarry from the guardhouse. How the player characters enter and investigate the quarry is up to them. The module describes three ways the player characters can enter. One, through a ventilation shaft on the surface. Two, the main cave entrance. And three, via a hidden sea cave entrance on a bluff where the Palyra River flows by. The quarry has three levels. Within the working areas of the quarry, there are a number of guards and workers, both human and goblins, but the goblins will only show up during the night shift. Much nastier creatures such as bugbears, troglodytes, and mud tigers are located in the off-limits areas of the quarry. The module has one unique monster called a mud tiger. It resembles a cross between a shark and an aquatic lizard. Several mud tigers from the caverns below the quarry have begun hunting in the dark shelf area and are responsible for the half-eaten bodies that have been found on dark shelf's waterfront as well as a little bit inland as well. To assist him with his operations, Burbgrok brought in a small group of evil clerics. The clerics have a temple within the quarry and worship an unspeakably evil deity they refer to as the Elder Elemental Eye. This addition to the module was provided as a tie-in to the T1 to T4 modules known as the Temple of Elemental Evil. The DM can present plot hooks here that would lead the player characters to the village of Hamlet, where the T1 module begins. I plan on discussing the T-series modules at a much later date. The treasure that the player characters can obtain is appropriate for their levels and for a low-level adventure. This includes low-level magic items. The module is considered concluded when the player characters have defeated both Burbgrok and, oh, here we go again, Glyer Thiel, and have freed the slaves in the quarry and guardhouse. The modules A1 to A4 are more linear in design, also known as railroading. A0, Danger at Dark Shelf Quarry, has more of a sandbox approach. Since it is meant as a prequel to the Slave Lords series, this module was not meant to be lethal to the player characters. However, A1, Slave Pits of the Undercity, was meant for 4th through 7th level characters, and this module is unlikely to provide enough experience points for the player characters to get to 4th level. So, the DM could use some other modules, such as the Temple of Elemental Evil series, as a means for the player characters to further gain the necessary experience points to level up. Alternatively, a dungeon master could use the Low Down in High Port adventure 
in the issue number of 221 of Dungeon Magazine to bridge the two modules. In my next video, I will review the Lowdown in Highport adventure before reviewing the A1 module in my subsequent video. As far as continuing their adventures, a good Dungeon Master would have both options available for the player characters to choose from, or even a third option. The drawings, maps, and art of the module were done by Brian Snodney, Kim Fagenbaum, Rich Longmore, and Mike Scully. Most of the module art has already been showcased in this review. For the next few slides, I will showcase the rest. The A0 Danger at Dark Shelf Quarry module is part of the Against the Slave Lords compilation which is available for purchase on the drive through RPG website. Thank you for watching. Hope this video has been informative and entertaining. I love many types of role playing games, especially Dungeons and Dragons. Inclusive in my wayward love is computer role playing games such as Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, the first two Dragon Age games, Baldur's Gate, Dragon's Dogma, and others. In the foreseeable future, for this channel, I plan on continuing to review D&D modules in more or less alphabetical orders of their mod codes. Till next time, this is RPG Mods Fan saying cheers, have a good day, and goodbye.